In this problem, we're going to go through the whole process of conducting a formal hypothesis test. Now, in section 8.2, we only take a look at testing the claim made about a population proportion. So, in this problem, it says, in a study of the accuracy of fast food drive through orders, one restaurant had 33 orders that were not accurate among 394 orders observed. Use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%. Does the accuracy rate appear to be acceptable? Now, first thing that we have to do is we have to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. Remember, step one, always write out what the original claim is first. So our original claim is the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%. So in symbolic form, that would mean that P is equal to 0 0.10. Now, next, we have to write out what would be true if the original claim is false. Well, if P is not equal to 0 0.10, well then P is not equal to 0 0.10. Then the null hypothesis, remember always concludes equals, so it would be P is equal to 0 0.10. And then the alternative hypothesis, we take a look at steps one and two. It's going to be the one that does not include the equal to symbol. So that would be not equal to. So since our alternative hypothesis contains a does not equal to symbol, that means that this is a two-tailed test. Additionally, since this is a two-tailed test, that means that we're going to have two critical values if we go ahead and use the critical value method. So let's go ahead and input our results into the problem so far. Okay, so our null and alternative hypothesis, null hypothesis is equal to, alternative was not equal to. And notice it says P is equal to 0 0.1. 0 0.1 and 0 0.10 are equivalent to each other. They're the same number. Let's go ahead and check answer. Okay. Next, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ask us for the test statistic and then also the p-value. Now, instead of using the formula that was provided to you in the notes, what we're going to do is we're going to use StatCrunch so that way it can do all the calculations for us. So let's go ahead and get more help. I'm going to open up StatCrunch. And now in StatCrunch, we're going to go to Stat. And since we're dealing with the population proportion, we go to proportion stats. We have one sample and we have a summary. Now the number of successes, this is the number of inaccurate orders, which was 33. And now the number of observations, 394. Now we want to perform a hypothesis test. Our null hypothesis is P is equal to 0 0.1. And then our alternative hypothesis is P is not equal to 0 0.1. Now let's go ahead, let's put show critical value. And then let's go ahead and put the significance level 0 0.01. Okay, so over here it gives us our test statistic. So our test statistic here is negative, and it says round to two decimal places, so I have negative 1.07. And then our p-value. Now, definition for p-value, it's the probability of us obtaining a test statistic as extreme as the value that we obtained. So our p-value here is 0 0.283. Now it's going to ask us to identify the conclusion for the hypothesis test. We need to determine if we're going to reject the null hypothesis or if we're going to fail to reject it. So let's go ahead and we're going to use both methods. We're going to use the critical value method and then I'll show you how to use the p-value method as well. So let's go back to our whiteboard. Okay. <clears throat> So now remember, since this was a two-tailed test, that indicates that we're going to have two critical values, one on each end. Okay. The first critical value, so this was given to us in StackCrunch, where it says critical Z, we have 2.58. 
So in StatCrunch, it only gives you the positive value. The value on the left-hand side, this is the just the negative value. This is negative 2.58. Now we have to see if our test statistic is in the critical region or not, the rejection zone. Well, the critical value, I'm sorry, the test statistic that we obtained, test statistic, we ended up with negative 1.07. So negative 1.07 is about right over here. Notice it's not in the rejection zone. So what that indicates is that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So this is the critical value method. And since our critical, since our test statistic is not in the critical region, it's not in the rejection zone, that means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now if we're using the p-value method, we have to compare our p-value to our significance level. So p-value method. We compare the p-value to the significance level. Our significance level is denoted with alpha. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what our p-value was. Our significance level was 0 0.01. Our p-value, going back to the problem, our p-value is 0 0.283. 0 0.283. So now if I compare these two decimals with each other, the p-value is bigger than the significance level. So since the p-value is bigger than the significance level, that indicates that we fail to reject the null hypothesis as well. So we just worked out this problem using two, uh, two different methods. We used the critical value method. We saw that we had to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the p-value method also indicated the same thing. Okay. So we know that we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then the wording for the final conclusion depends on what the original claim was. If the original claim included equal to or it did not. So if we go back to our original claim, we can see that the original claim included equality. So if we take a look at step one, it says p is equal to 0 0.10. So the original claim includes equality. And we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So the final conclusion here is we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. And then we'll go ahead and put what the claim is. So let's go back to our problem. We know we have to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%. So essentially what that means is the rate of inaccurate orders could be 10%. Now the next part, does the actually rate appear to be acceptable? Well, we fail to reject that the inaccurate order rate is 10%, meaning it could possibly be 10%. Well, 10% is pretty high. So the restaurant should work on their inaccurate orders. So let's go ahead and take a look at which one of these match the description that we just, we just said. Yeah. Looks like answer choice C. Since there is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%, it is plausible for, it is plausible that the inaccuracy order, inaccuracy rate is 10%. This rate would be too high, so the restaurant should work on lowering their rate. 